Welcome back to Dongit's Model Railway. In the last video, I wired up some new block sections to expand the layout. I had a problem with the layout PC, so I couldn't configure them straight away. The PC is now fixed, so I can continue. This is Flim Config, the software that configures the Merg hardware that I am using. I have added a new node to the layout control bus, so I need to initialize it. Hold down the button on the module, the LEDs will change colour and the node will appear in Flim Config. It needs an ID and a name. This new node is a CAN V out and will provide the ABC braking channels that were missing at the bottom of the loop as well as one of the lines on the ramp. To set an ABC output from the computer I need to create a new event in the software node. New events are created with the learn function. An event needs a name and an event number. The event number must be unique for that module. I need a unique event for each ABC block so that they can be controlled independently from the computer. Once our events exist, we need other modules to be able to react to them. This is done by selecting the event and teaching another node to react to that event. Here I teach the CAN out to set the relevant output in response to the event. Many outputs named like this can get confusing. Let's give them proper names. We can do that using the Add Output Names feature. Now we have good human readable output names, it is much easier to avoid a mistake when teaching the module to respond to events. Make sure the configuration is saved to the board by writing the events. You can test events are working correctly in Flim config by triggering them manually. How you check it is working will obviously depend on what is connected to the output. In this case it's a relay, so I'm listening for the faint click and feeling the top of the relays to see if the right one is being changed. Don't forget to save the layout configuration. This is JMRI. This is the software I use to control the model railway. It will work with a variety of different hardware, not just the mode hardware I am using. To add train detection, we will need to work with sensors and blocks. Sensors are what JMRI calls any input from the layout to the computer, and blocks are what JMRI calls a track circuit. Let's add some sensors to the sensors table for node 259. These will be for the descending side of the ramp. To reference the inputs of a Merg CAN bus board in JMRI, the address needed is plus n, the node number, in this case 259, e, and the event number, that's between 9 and 16. I've given these generic names initially. It's easy to see what is wired up where by moving the train about. The occupancy state changes live as the vehicle is detected. This track circuit is the main part of the ramp descent. I'm naming this block RD. The last yard before the signal is a separate track circuit. I am naming that block RDA. The last track circuit before a signal is often referred to as the birth track circuit. The ascending line is wired to the two spare inputs on node 260. Node 260 already has the full set created as I added all eight when I added the sensors to that board. By moving the coach around, I can see that this block is the birth track circuit for the ascending line. I'll name that block RUA. The other channel has not activated. However, there's only one left. So by elimination, it has to be this one. I've left myself a note against this channel that it previously didn't work properly. I now need all eight channels on this particular DTC8. So I'll have to address this. 
as it is right under the far side of the layout, looking at it in situ is very difficult. I'll swap it out with a known good one later on, so I can investigate it without having to be underneath that far corner of the layout. I need to define blocks in the blocks table. These are a one-to-one -one correlation with the sensors I added earlier. Each one reads a specific sensor and represents a track circuit. The track segments on the map can now be assigned to the specific blocks. This gives the visual representation of what track is occupied and where. When I made this part of the panel, I hadn't actually laid this track yet. I haven't left myself enough track segments here to add in the birth track circuit. I will extend the track and split this section. The downline also needs its blocks set. Let's test this out by moving the coach about again. The blocks appear in red as the vehicle is detected. Everything works except that one block with the dodgy sensor. Adding functional signals to JMRI is straightforward. I am using the BR2003WE signal system which represents British practice. I am using virtual masts at the moment as all this is still hidden track. Once I have emerged onto the visible surface I will be using physical working signals. I am using standard three aspect signals for all of the hidden signals. Attach the signals to the track at the block boundary. JMRI uses the track layout as drawn in the panel when working out the routing options so placing them properly is important. To get NX routing working, we need some buttons on the panel for the entrance and exit buttons. JMRI uses, or arguably abuses, a sensor object to create these buttons. These are virtual sensors and do not correspond to any layout hardware. If the JMRI NX panel tutorial started off by saying that rather than just telling you to make a load of sensors, I'm sure a lot less people would be confused trying to follow the tutorial. Once you figure out the sensors they are telling you to create initially are just the NX buttons, it's all pretty straightforward. But before you figured that out, it all looks very confusing. Putting an NX button right at the edge of the layout didn't work out here. I'd either need to tell it that the track ends, or create somewhere else for it to go. I'm creating the next block now, as this will require the least changes later, when I do lay more track beyond this point. This is the process to add a virtual sensor NX button. I'm using the internal connection type as there isn't one of these out on the layout. Perhaps if someone was creating a physical NX panel, there might be a hardware connection for these?
This is the routing table. JMRI can auto discover signal routes or you can pick and add only the ones you want to be valid. I'm using full interlocking. This means that JMRI will only allow routes to be set if the routes do not conflict and the track is not reserved or occupied. It does depend on a high level of feedback regarding train position though. Controlling the ABC was the first thing I encountered that JMRI wasn't explicitly designed to handle. I'm using JMRI's logics feature to control it. I use ABC like the real railway uses AWS or TPWS. If you enter the berth track circuit approaching a signal with no onward path set, the ABC for that block cuts in and the train will break to a stand before the signal. I use a standard length for my berth track circuits of one yard, conveniently the length of one piece of flexi track. If I wasn't squeezing this layout into a relatively small space, I'd have gone with two yards as the stops do look fairly abrupt from high speed. The plan isn't to use this as the primary train control mechanism though, just to stop accidents. Drivers should be slowing down long before the point the ABC steps in. This is the simplest example of an ABC configuration, where there is only one single route across a junction. If there were multiple routes, multiple routes would need to be listed, with only one being required to be set. The JMRI generic output type is light, and this is what I'm using to control the ABC modules. You'll notice the node addresses are all N0E something. This is because they are the events defined in the software node in FlimConfig, which is node 0. In automatic territory, where there is no NX route to read at all, it is even more difficult. Let's have a demonstration of this working. I've put a screen capture of the panel in the top left corner so you can see what's going on on the computer. I'll give the class 60 a route through the bottom of the rank junction. You'll see the class 56 appear hot on its heels as it's been set to run much faster. Now the class 60 has cleared the junction, I can give the class 56 a path too. It has now caught up with where the 60 is and is slowing. The 60 clears the block ahead and the ABC cuts off, the loco returns to full speed. I will give both of the trains a parallel path into the yard here. Class 56 has caught up with class 60 and both are stopping smoothly in parallel at the end of the yard on independently controlled ABC modules. I'll give the class 56 a path out of the yard first and then up the ramp. This is the extent of the live track at the moment. The next step will be to get the middle line up the ramp working. 
This line is both reversible and requires a reversing module. I want to get this working without resorting to any short detection, relying on the NX route alone. But that's a job for the next video. Remember to hit the subscribe button if you want to see further videos. And I'll see you next time on Dongit's Model Railway.